intrigued me. You said you don't use commercial fertilizers with the exception of nitrogen. That's right. How did you come to that conclusion? Well, for years we would put out, we were using chicken litter, and then we would also variable rate apply our, all of our phosphorus and potassium. Uh, eight years ago when I started with the cover crops, um, we decided, well, let's start doing some test trials and see how much we can cut back on that phosphorus and potassium that we're applying. Um, in the second year, after seeing side-by-side -side yield results and not seeing really any gain from the extra phosphorus and potassium, um, we completely eliminated it. Once we got into the second or third year, um, we started to even further cut back, especially on our soybean land. Today, we don't put any chicken litter or any fertility on soybean land. We're seeing the same yields that we've been seeing in the past. So the corn land, yeah, it still gets the two tons of litter only 50 pounds of nitrogen and but a large part of that nitrogen is coming from the cover crop and and the increase of organic matter in the soil so yeah buzz i mentioned your organic matter levels increased by about a half a percent or so when we first started out uh seven or eight years ago we were at 0.6 now a lot of these fields haven't even been tilled in 20 years so we thought that we were or well, we're strip tilling or minimum till we could build our organic matter, but we could not even build our organic matter from no-till or strip-till. It wasn't until we first started with cover crops that we started seeing an increase about two-tenths of a percent every year. So today we're seeing some areas are at right at two percent, from one and a half to two percent, depending on the, the type of land. So when you, uh, we're talking cover crops, how tall are these uh, before you're, you know, some people like to see them this That's high right. and other people this high, where, right. where are you well, at? The first year, you know, eight years ago, we were a little, got, I got a little nervous when we pl first planted the cover crops and terminated when we were about waist high. And then the more we started to learn about the cover crops, we found that we need to grow those all the way out to till planting time. And today we plant all of our corn, we plant green. So we're maxed out for planting the first of April. So we have, you know, the Abruzzi rod that's six feet tall. Um, so dry biomass at planting, we're anywhere from seven to 12,000 pounds dry biomass that we're planting into on corn. Um, cotton, when we do plant cotton and soybean land, we kill off that cover crop uh, three to four weeks ahead of time, just to ensure that we have moisture at the time. And if there's any insects living in that cover crop that they've moved on or they're not supplying a home for them okay. to live in to move over mm -hmm. to the cash crop when it yeah. comes up. So you're kind of a little bit concerned about that green bridge kind of That's concept right. there. The, and, and cover crops, when they're early on, especially into March, first of March, they are, they're still relatively small. But if you can let them grow that last three weeks of March, they'll almost triple the biomass um, once it starts warming up and the day is getting longer. So by just planting green and let them grow to the first of April, you can get a whole lot more out of it. A lot of people, I think, miss out and really don't get the full benefit of cover crops because they terminate too early. I understand a lot of their concerns about moisture and maybe um, possibility to have some insect damage later on that could carry um, carry on to their crop when it first comes up. But there's so much more advantage to letting it grow, Let it grow. and then planting into it. One quick question and then we'll head in to look at your mix there. What advantage do you feel you're getting from that extra organic matter that you're raising? Uh, well, definitely the, on the organic matter, I mean, with their, the, the nitrogen and the uh, moisture holding, and we're just getting so much more moisture that we can hold in the ground. When you figure 0. 0.6 to 1.6, um, you know, and a whole 1%, we're, we're, it's like having another inch of water out there. And in South Carolina, we got a kind of saying that we're always two weeks away from a drought. We just, with our low organic matter and our extreme heat, we just can't hold the moisture yeah. long. So if we can have an extra inch there and we go that, those two weeks of, without any rain, maybe that little extra inch of water will get us. Um, Put you three water. weeks from a drought. Huh? Yeah, three <laughs> weeks. But we're always, um, you know, it's always pushing it, you know, okay. here. Well, why don't we go inside the shop and you can show us the mix that you're talking about and then we can ask a little more question about why you're using that uh, multi-species because I think you said you got 10 or 12 different plants right. in there. Maybe we'll ask you a little bit about how you manage that. Okay.